Today, indeed, uh, we would like to tell you a little bit about the role and value of the data steward. Um, that's based on our case study from TU Delft. And uh, why we wanted to talk, the two of us, it's because indeed I'm coordinating the whole program, but we thought it would be very nice uh, for you to also hear from a data steward who is actually doing the work and talking with researchers. So you can have both of us with slightly different perspective on the program and on the whole initiative. So you already know who, you, who we are. Um, uh, just to start with a quick outline of the presentation. We would first like to give you a short introduction to TU Delft as an organization, so just that you have a little bit of a context of uh, how big the organization is, what kind of focus do we have. Uh, then we would like to explain to you the rationale behind the data stewardship project. So how this whole thing came about, why did we want to start with the data stewardship? Uh, secondly, thirdly, Esther will tell about the key principles behind the project. And finally, we will both talk about the key challenges and future outlook, and of course, open the floor for questions. So let's start with the introduction to the Delft. So some of you, I understand that we are from geographically different regions. Uh, we thought that maybe that's nice to just say, what is TU Delft and also where is TU Delft for people who don't know the small little country, the Netherlands so well. So TU Delft stands for Delft University of Technology. And as the name suggests, that's actually a university. We have a lot of technical applications of our research. So lots of industry collaborations and that also implies a little bit about what kind of support we need to provide of, to researchers. Of course, industry collaboration means tensions between open science and the ability to share our research more freely with the world. And in terms of where Delft is, when you look at the map of the Netherlands, Delft is just sort of between The Hague and Rotterdam. So in this cluster of a lot of cities uh, in the Netherlands. And some statistics. And we are showing statistics from 2017, not because we were lazy and we didn't want to update our slides, but because uh, our statistics office hasn't yet produced the statistics for 2018. So hope you can bear with us. And in general, TU Delft is quite a research intensive institution. And in 2017, we've been actually the 11th top beneficiary of Horizon 2020 findings. So you can see lots of research is happening, lots of research grant, that's quite an important income stream. And as I mentioned before, a lot of industry collaboration, which is another important income stream for our institution. And also, as you see, being a beneficiary of Horizon 2020 findings, so funding, so open data pilot, all that commitment to open science and that industry collaboration, there is a bit of a clash there that we have to manage and our data stewards are trying to do in their daily work. We have eight different faculties at TU Delft. Uh, they all support uh, more of an applied sciences, but they differ between each other. So we have everything from aerospace engineering, all the way through applied sciences uh, and to then how do we apply all those technologies into life so like technology policy and management so the ethics of technology so they are quite diverse in the type of research for all that research focus on how do we actually apply our research findings into daily lives and uh, we have 5,000 employees, and maybe that's quite important to say that in the Netherlands, this means that we include PhD students. PhD students have an employee status in the Netherlands. And apart from that, we have 23,500 as of 2017 students, and that number is actually quite rapidly growing. So that's the introduction to TU Delft. I hope you have a little bit of a better picture of what kind of institution we are, that we are quite research intensive with lots of industry collaborations. And now I would like to talk about how this whole data stewardship project came about. Why did we want to do that? Why did we want to start this? And it really starts from the core mission of TU Delft. So as I mentioned, at TU Delft, we do a lot of things which have to be, or are, our mission is to apply it for the society. So. TU Delft has issued the strategic framework for the years 2018-2024, which the whole title of the framework is Impact for a Better Society. 
And obviously, to make an impact for a better society, you need to share the knowledge, the findings with the people around you. So consequently, openness is one of the four major principles which guide the whole framework. So if you look at this, you can say that openness is really embedded. It's one of the core values that we share at UDEL. And you may ask a question, why openness? Why do we think that uh, openness is so important? So on top of what I've already mentioned, openness means openness and sharing with the society. Another important aspect of openness that is that transparency and research reproducibility go really along that. And probably you've heard about this, that open science is just science done right. I think it's quite a nice uh, quote that has been around for quite a while. And that really underlines the principles that if you are open with your research results, if you make your research results available for scrutiny, you allow the science to self-correct itself. So we really promote better, better quality research. But still, you might ask a question, how did it all begin? Like, how did you actually come up with the idea of having a dedicated data stewardship project? What that actually is? So, as I mentioned before, because openness was so important, but researchers come and go, we have lots of researchers at the faculty, so not everybody really thought about open science as their core principles. So we had to do lots of advocacy efforts to make sure that researchers understand the importance of open science. So back in 2015, so quite a while ago now, my colleagues, and you have the three pictures of my colleagues uh, at the bottom of the slide, did a series of open science roadshows at all, all the faculties at UDEL. So they went to every faculty, every department within the faculty, so more than 40 presentations in 2015, to try to tell researchers about the importance of open science in their day-to-day -day research practices. And as a result, researchers, of course, nobody questioned the importance of open science. Yes, we should share our research with the society. That sounds all good. But researchers had some concerns. They were wondering, that all sounds great, but we are extremely busy. We don't want more work. We need less work. We need to be a bit more efficient. So we would like to get dedicated support. If you want us to follow open science principles, that's fine, but you need to support us appropriately. So that was quite important. And thankfully, the colleagues that were giving those presentations thought, OK, if that's really what researchers want to have, let's see what we can do about this. And then there was this whole thought that, indeed, if we want to promote open science, if we want to do research more reproducibly, we have to think about all that support we provide researchers from the very start of the research project. In a way, if you think about this, if you would come to a researcher towards the very end when they are publishing the results, when they are closing up their research grants, and you tell them, now open up everything, but they haven't been managing the research data from the very start, they don't have any metadata, they don't have any provenance tracking or version control of what they've been doing, sharing is quite a challenge. How can you share your data? How can you share your research if you are not sure which figure was generated with what data exactly? So we thought we actually can't just promote open science, tell people share your data at the time of publication. We have to go back much earlier and involve researchers much earlier in the process and support them in good data management practices from the very start and then talk and see if something can be open and shared with the others or not. So that was the whole principle. We decided to take a step back. If we really care about open science, we need to work with our researchers at an earlier stage. And we discussed that whole thing with our leadership. And at that stage, at that time, uh, our rector magnificus at TU Delft was Karol Leiben. And I'm mentioning his name because some of you might be familiar. Karol was a pioneer of open science at our campus. And he's now also involved in the European Open Science Cloud. He's the chairman of the project, so perhaps more of you will be in touch with Karel. He's a really person advocating for open science principles. And consequently, because openness was so important, Karel said that if researchers need that support to go a step forward with open science, we need to support them. If we really care as an institution, we need to stand behind what we preach. 
And that's why Carol said, let's hire some data stewards that can help with researchers that can guide them through that process of data management. So what happened as a consequence of that, we got strategic support for the initiation of data stewardship project. We got some central funding from the central university to kickstart the whole project that TU developed. And the money was given us for three years. <coughs> from the beginning of 2018 until the end of 2020. So as you see, we are sort of halfway through that project right now. And just to mention, because sometimes uh, people ask, like, who are the data stewards? How are they positioned within the institution? We wanted to make sure that data stewards are working very close to researchers. Esther will, of course, expand on that later on. But just wanted to give you a picture of how data, data support is structured at TU Delft. TU Delft is part of the consortium of four technical universities, which manage the 4TU Center for Research Data. That's our data archive for technical universities. And we also have a dedicated central research data support team at the library. Myself, the data stewardship coordinator, I'm based in the library as part of the core research data support team. And then the data stewards, you can see the, the purple boxes on the right hand side, they're based at faculties. As I mentioned, we have eight different faculties. There are eight data stewards, one at every faculty, and they are line managed by faculty executive secretaries. You might want to think what, why a secretary is managing a data steward. Actually, those executive secretaries are the second most important, most powerful people at the faculty. So that means that the faculties really embrace data management principles and also through the data stewards, they get a lot of advocacy about the, the importance of good data management. And as you, if, you, if you would like to see it that way, my role is to connect the data stewards with the central uh, support team at the library. So we try to build on synergies between those two teams. And the second important principle before Esther takes over, I promise she would tell you about more about what the data stewards actually do. But just wanted to reflect on that, that this importance of this disciplinary support and starting early, starting with researchers, was also reflected in our policy development strategy. Our TU Delft Research Data Framework Policy, which is published, so if you would like to read it, there is a link underneath defines the roles and responsibilities of different stakeholders at the university level. So for example, what the library needs to do in order to support good data management, what does the executive board needs to do to support good data management practice, what are the responsibilities of the legal team, and so forth. There are several compulsory statements, which everybody needs to comply with, and the framework policy also contains templates for faculties. That's something which is already approved and published. But what is also quite important for us, and Esther will talk about this a little bit more, every faculty will also be invited and asked to develop their specific faculty data policies. And why it's important? Because these faculty policies will define the roles and responsibilities at the faculty level and will be able to reflect disciplinary differences. We don't want to have empty documents, which mean nothing. We want something that is practically relevant to researchers at the faculty. And with that, I hope I have explained to you how the whole project came about, why we wanted to start with the data stewardship. And now I will hand over to Esther, who will tell you about key principles behind the project. Thank you, Marta. So the key principle of the data steward uh, SHIP program is to place the research and the researchers' needs at the center. So data stewards are there to support researchers in practicing good research data management, and they are not some sort of police that ensures compliance with policies or funder requirements. So instead, the objective of the program is to achieve cultural change and not compliance. So with research and researchers at the center of the program, it became clear that disciplinary specific support is key to facilitate good data management practices. Therefore, since the end of 2018, each faculty of TU Delft has a data steward with a similar research background to the re researchers of the faculty, 
uh, that they are supporting. So that means that all data stewards have a research background with a PhD in a relevant subject area so that they are able to speak the same language as the researchers. And in addition to that research background, data stewards also follow relevant support training. And you can read more about uh, these support trainings uh, on the blog that we posted on the Open Working website. You can find the link below on the slide. So what is it that data stewards do and what type of support are they offering? So data stewards are the first point of contact for researchers and they can answer any questions that researchers have regarding data or software management. So most of the questions that come in can be answered by the data stewards, uh, but if they're more specifically related to ICT, legal or library services, the data steward will refer the researcher to the specialists. And so this point of contact is very important because it can be unclear for researchers where they need to go with their questions. And by contacting the data steward, they will also always find an answer to the question, or they will at least find a person that will be able to answer their question. So my day can actually be very variable. So as a primary contact point, uh, we answer questions about data storage, data archiving, and we help with writing of data management sections and paragraphs for research projects. And this includes estimating budget costs for data management uh, from the proposal stage as well as later on. And we are also contacted with questions about compliance with funders and journal policies. In turn, we are also in contact with researchers about the construction of the faculty policy on research data management. So the policy that uh, Marta described earlier. And uh, by contacting researchers about this policy, we will be able to implement their feedback and make the policy a relevant uh, and useful document instead of just uh, some pages that no one will actually look at. And uh, we also play a supporting role in data management discussions. Uh, so these discussions are about what data to keep, uh, what uh, data to throw away, what data should be opened up for the public. And we are involved in improving the current information uh, that is available on research data management on the website, etc. And we play a role in setting up workshops and trainings uh, that are tailored to the researchers needs. Uh, so these can be very faculty or department specific. And by performing all these tasks, uh, data stewards create awareness for data management and they show the added values of good data management practices. So that ends the discussion of the key principles behind the project. And now we will further hear from Marta about the key challenges of the project before I take over uh, with some of the challenges and the future outlook of the project. Thank you, Esther, for explaining what you're doing as a data steward. <laughs> there will be, of course, more opportunities for you to ask questions to Esther at the end about her role, if you're interested. But now let's talk about the challenges, because we talk about this as a beautiful story, but it's not always easy. There are some challenges associated with the project and we will both try to be as open as possible with you about those challenges so that you can evaluate what are the pros and cons of running such a big endeavor. And if you have any questions, we will of course do the best to be able to answer your questions as openly as possible. So first of all, one of the important things we really needed to do is to make sure that we act as data stewards, as the whole data support team, as a team, not as a bunch of individual or individuals or not perhaps as the central team, you know, against the data stewards. We had to make sure that we all share the same vision, that we all see how our individual roles and responsibilities contribute to the bigger picture, to the bigger goal, of ensuring that data management practices at TU Delft are improving. So a team is not a group of individuals. So we had to, that was part of my job, is to make sure that we have important peer support network among the data stewards, especially when you think about this. These are people who just started their work as a data steward. There was no data steward before at the faculty. Suddenly you start as this sole lonely person at your faculty with no peer support network. So for us, it was quite important that we can help each other, that 
data stewards have somebody to turn to. So what we have created is we have weekly meetings of all the data stewards team, which is also joined by appropriate colleagues from the central data support team. And of course, this depends what the discussion topic is, the appropriate person would join. So we make sure we have constant information exchange. And during those weekly meetings, data stewards often raise issues that they've encountered while working with researchers at their faculties or perhaps with the support staff at their faculties. And all together, we try to solve them. In addition, we have also created a Slack channel. So that's, I think, actually our first line of support for any urgent queries. And you can see Esther nodding. Probably she can tell you more <laughs> about this. But I guess what is quite important for us that people don't feel lonely, that we think like there is somebody that can help me with those questions. And depending, of course, on the nature of the questions, it can be, for example, that a data steward who doesn't, uh, because faculties differ in, their, uh, in the type of research being done. In some of them, for example, there is lots of work with personal data. Some other faculties might not be so intensively working with personal research data. So very often there will be a question, what do I do with these kind of interviews? How do I anonymize them? And then we try to really help each other. And if we don't know the answer, contact yet other experts from the central team or from the legal team and so on and so forth. And what is also quite important is to ensure that we provide sufficient personal and professional development opportunities. So for example, make sure that data stewards can develop and grow in their roles, but also join external networks. So for example, go to conferences, meet colleagues from other universities, develop their horizons, but make also sure that they get the appropriate training that they need and chances to grow and grow continuously in their role. So that's something that is quite important, I guess, for my role as a coordinator to make sure that we all are part of the team and are happy as part, as part of that team. And another challenge is the recruitment in retention. So as Esther pointed out, data stewards are people who have research background. So they are disciplinary expert. On top of that, they are interested and deeply passionate about open science and data management issues. And even more importantly, they are really excellent communicators. And I have to also say politicians. Very often data stewards would have to navigate between different requirements, between different demands from different people within faculties and outside, who might sometimes have some conflicting expectations of what their job is, what they would like them to do. So this requires a lot of political tact. And then you think about this, we are hiring a researcher, somebody who did a PhD beforehand. So how do we find the right, per the right person who has got all these qualities in one, one single person? So that's a challenge, you know, to find the right people. And I, unfortunately, I have no recipes for success, how to find the right person. I think we've been quite lucky at UDAL, but that has been quite a lot of work. And I have to say that for two positions, we had to advertise the job twice to be able to find the right person. I think sometimes it's better to wait a little bit to make sure you find the right person than to start with perhaps somebody who doesn't really fit the team, or perhaps you would think you would not be able to do the job. And the other question is, how do you retain these people? So, you know, now we have those data stewards who are, as I mentioned, disciplinary experts, passionate and knowledgeable about open science and data management, excellent communicators and politicians. And at the same time, more and more universities would like to have data stewards in place or perhaps expand their data support team so how do we convince our wonderful, amazing data steward that it's worth staying in Delft? That's quite a challenge, I have to admit. And we also have to think, I think, more holistically about job profile for the data stewards for appropriate career progression. How do we make sure that being a data steward is actually officially recognized by colleagues from HR as a job, as a profession? What kind of salary does those people should have so we don't compete with each other for those excellent people that we have, but that we can collaborate together and learn from each other's experience and expertise and also collaborate within other, with other universities. So that's one of the challenges. And the, second, the third challenge, actually, I would like to talk about is the costs. So when you think about the fact that data stewards come with a PhD degree, for us, that was quite 
necessary to at least give them the postdoc salary. So if those people have earned their degree, we hire them because of their exper exper expertise qualification, because all of that, you know, years of research that they've done, we have to reward them appropriately. But then at least for that's the Dutch salary. So some of you might be a bit afraid. We pay a lot of taxes in the Netherlands, hence the salaries are a bit higher, I think, and the costs of life are perhaps a bit higher. But a salary, a yearly salary for a postdoc, together with the add-on costs, so the pension and so on, is 65,000 euro per year. So that's for one full-time employee. So if you multiply it by eight, you end up with half a million euro per year just to maintain the salaries of data stewards. And this budget, of course, does not include the costs for like conference attendance, for training, for any of those expenses. So that's quite costly. And that's something that you should probably keep in mind when, once if you want to start a similar initiative. And another challenge before Esther takes over and starts to reflect about effectiveness of the project is that very often um, it's in a way us becoming the data stewards, becoming victims of their own success. People think that if there is a data stewards helping with data management, they would like to take them, you know, use them to help them with their uh, workflows and daily data management practices. And that's great. That's nice that there is such an enthusiasm. But we have been receiving growing number of requests for data stewards. Oh, can you please come and work with our research group two days per week, three days per week, one day per week? And unfortunately, just because we have only one data steward per faculty, and Esther can perhaps say she's quite overworked with all the different requests she's receiving, we unfortunately had to say no to such requests. So a data steward is working at the faculty level. They help with policies, with workflows, workflows at the faculty level. They provide training at the faculty level. They do advocacy. They help the whole faculty to build their capacity to support researchers in data management but they can't provide sufficient resources. They don't have simply enough time to be able to support every research group at a couple of days time per week. We would have to have like maybe 20 data stewards per faculty. So what we are trying to advocate now that researchers budget in the grant proposals for dedicated data managers, they could work with them on a group level, perhaps at a departmental level, of course, depending how big a demand is for data management, and be there in the faculty on top of a data steward, but provide more dedicated support. So really help them with day-to-day -day data management practices. So we need both, but we do have to manage people's expectations and stress that data steward can stay with you and work with you at the one day per week um, ratio because they have other jobs to be done. And now Esther will explain about the cultural change. Thanks. Uh, so another challenge is to see whether we are achieving cultural change. And a big question in this challenge is how do you measure cultural change in order to see whether you're achieving it? So do we count the number of data set sets in the archive or the number of DMPs that are written by researchers? So at TU Delft we took a different approach by sending out a survey in 2017, which was run at all the faculties. And here you see the results of one of the questions. And you can actually find all the results and questions of the survey by following the link below on the slide uh, that will bring you to the blog in, on our open working website. And so one of these questions was whether the research uh, is automatically backed up. And as you can see, up to 50% of the researchers indicated that they do not automatically back up their data. And so the results of this survey from 2017 will be uh, compared to a rerun of the survey in 2019 to see if we have indeed uh, increased awareness of proper data management and uh, whether we have achieved this cultural change. And another way to achieve cultural change uh, was to start the Data Champion program in 2018. So although embedding a data steward uh, at each faculty uh, is important to uh, create awareness and to achieve the cultural change, bottom-up community building efforts are actually essentially to fully accomplish all these goals. 
And it's also impossible for a single data uh, steward uh, to have all the, uh, the detailed disciplinary backgrounds to understand and support the, all the types of research carried out in one faculty. As Marta mentioned, we are quite busy already. Uh, so we need a support from data stewards needed support from data champions. And so therefore the data champion program was launched in September 2018 and we had a kickoff meeting in December 2018, uh, which we also wrote a blog about, which you can read on the, on the website. And so on this slide, you see the 38 data champions at the different faculties. And as you can see, there is at least one data champion at each faculty. And their number is steadily increasing since the start of the program. And uh, the goal for 2019 is to have at least one data champion per department. So what do data champions do? So they are members uh, of staff uh, from all different levels and they all act as local advocates or mentors, uh, which is also the main requirement for becoming a data champion. They have to be willing to act as an advisor to the department, group or faculty members. They raise awareness for data management uh, at these local levels, so at the department, group or section level. And they have knowledge of discipline specific management practices. Uh, so what, what would be too much for all the data stewards to know about all these specific management practices. And they are expected to attend data champion meetings that take uh, place about two years, uh, two times at, uh, each year at the university level. So that means that it's open to all of the data champions. So all the 38 people you saw. And we also organize meetings at the faculty uh, department level that take place more frequently. So for example, yesterday, uh, I had a meeting with our data champions to see uh, what they think of the faculty's research uh, data management policy. So, uh, and the next one will then probably focus on uh, best practices in their departments on data management. Um, so the data champions are front runners in the software data management and they make the cultural change towards better uh, research data management practices possible at the very local level. So then what is next for the project? So Marta has outlined the goals of the data uh, stewardship program for 2019 in a blog post, which you can again find on our, uh, our website. And some of these goals are uh, organizing more software carpentry workshops so uh, we have instructors now, uh, which means that we can organize uh, these workshops, which are on basic software management uh, by ourselves. So that means we can organize uh, a lot more. So next one will be in June and then July and probably November as well. So we'll have a lot to work uh, on that. And we're also um, working on an electronic lab notebook trial uh, with uh, RSpace and eLab journal. Um, that will run for a year. We are organizing coding lunch and data crunch uh, walk-in consultation hours. So that is a monthly uh, walk-in consultation uh, where people can come with their problems uh, regarding software or data and where we will try our best to help them out with these problems. And also, uh, as we already said, the faculty research data policies will have to be constructed and come into effect by the end of 2019. And uh, of course, the data champion network will be expanded with having a data champion per department in 2019, by the end of 2019. And we will have to rerun the survey in order to compare the results to see whether we have indeed achieved the uh, cultural change. And uh, we're currently working on acquiring sustainable funding uh, for the project, which is uh, quite a challenge as Marta has already uh, mentioned. And uh, with this, we would like to end with three takeaway messages. Uh, so the data stewardship program was set up and is successful thanks to the support of senior management as policy developments and uh, funding for the project are key for successful implementation. And there is a balance between the available uh, resources that your institute has 
and uh, how to achieve the most with the resources that you have. So what is good value for the money when it comes to achieving cultural change? And um, also a very important factor in this is setting up a great team and coordinating this team in a way that ha Marta has actually been doing wonderfully uh, for the past years and at TU Delft. And therefore team building and people are key to uh, achieve cultural change. And uh, we would now like to thank you very much for your uh, attention. And please feel free to ask any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this was a lot of information, a lot of, lots of valuable information that I, I think uh, everyone has to digest now. And I see in the chat that someone seems to agree with that. Yes, uh, Elena says you have data champions, data managers, data stewards. How do you deal with possible confusion regarding tasks and responsibilities? So I can start and perhaps Esther, you can continue how it works specifically at your faculty. We do, uh, for example, at the university level, we have come up with like a table at, that de defines those roles and responsibilities at the TU Delft level, in the, if that's of interest, uh, I'm perhaps Ali, I can send you the link afterwards so you can disseminate to participants together with the uh, link to the slide, if that's okay. But basically, indeed, you are very right. It was quite important that it's clear to all the key stakeholders what's the difference between all those different roles. So we actually have a little table comparing, this is a data steward, this is a data manager, how do we make sure we don't confuse those different roles? Who are those people? At what level do they work? Who pays for their salaries as well? That was also an important consideration. Um, there were some confusion, of course. And for example, as I mentioned, we've been advocating for researchers to budget for data manager in their grant applications. Recently, I've been contacted that uh, a researcher got a grant and they have money for a data steward for their group, which of course, was quite confusing. They used the, the wrong name and then some researchers might be confused. How do I find the data steward? And they would contact the wrong person. So we had to then talk with those people to make sure we called that person differently, which we managed to succeed. But that's a very important point that we are clear about the roles and responsibilities. And wherever we can, we do explain those roles and responsibilities to the different stakeholders. Esther, would you like to add something? Um, so, yeah, I think that's already a very um, uh, good answer to the question. And also, in practical, the tasks are actually quite different between the data champions and data stewards, uh, as in there's hardly any confusion about that because uh, people don't contact the data champions, for example, to write their data management plan. Uh, so that's clearly uh, an action that data stewards are responsible for. Um, but whenever someone, uh, I mean, people from their group can still contact me with very specific uh, issues, but then I will also be more likely to contact the data champion to see whether they have an answer before I try to find out uh, the answer myself, uh, etc. So in a sense, it's also very much about working together and uh, trying to not burden the data champions with um, any um, issues that I could actually resolve. Um, because, of course, data champions are not getting paid for their efforts. So there are researchers that do this in their free time. So it's also important uh, that they are not uh, overwhelmed with new responsibilities, etc., which I could actually take care of. And I, I haven't really gotten any data manage, um, manager questions yet. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been asked to to work, uh, to work for, for no, not yet. <laughs> uh, so I, I have no specific uh, yeah, experience with that. No. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the answer. Um, I can't see the name. Uh, someone asks, is it easy for them to work together? them do you mean the managers and the stewards so if, if you mean data champions and data stewards and uh, there's no conflict because we both want the same thing actually so um, in a sense we, we as data stewards were more facilitating the interest of data champions and thereby raising awareness because 
they are then able to um, um, yeah, act on these interests and uh, support others as well. So then you get sort of a keychain effect. Um, in in sense of uh, data managers, it's also it's it's a different work field. So, say. so you could see it as the three separate boxes that Marta showed earlier for the library and uh, TU Delft, etc. We all have different tasks and responsibilities, and it's probably a good idea to um, publish a blog about this using mm -hmm. that document to ensure that there's no confusion. And then in the end, we all want uh, better research data uh, practices. So uh, it's, it's really, I, I haven't felt tensions or conflicts uh, in, this, in these situations. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Valentina asks, in your own experience, what is the key factor in raising awareness of data management needs in scientists that don't recognize those needs? or are particularly reluctant to recognize the usefulness of improving research data practices? Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so I, I think everyone recognizes, recognizes the needs, but there, sometimes scientists are fearful to express those needs or they're not entirely sure what those needs are until you explain to them what you can provide. And sometimes there's also a bit of confusion as in, uh, they think that uh, all we want to do is for them to open up their data. And in a sense, yes, I would really like for them to open up their data. Uh, but it's more important that they feel supported in, in doing this. So I will have to listen to their, uh, their reluctance. Why are they reluctant to uh, practicing good data management? And in most um, situations, they are not. They're, they just don't fully understand what is being meant and how should they do this. And in general, even with very reluctant researchers, I find that if you take the time and you listen to them and you answer all their questions and you try to find uh, a way to support them specifically, they are very happy and they feel supported. And um, then they're actually a step closer to at least improving their data management practices and perhaps not ready to open to fully open up all their research and their data, um, but that will maybe be a next step that you can take in the next meeting. Uh, so it's really about incremental steps in the in that sense. And I, I hope that answers. Okay. Just wanted to say that I completely agree, with Esther. And sometimes you know you have really diverse needs. You have people who are really excellent and perhaps ask you for advice which repository might be better to publish certain outputs or. Esther recently had a question about, you know, what are the preservation policies of one of the discipline specific repositories where they wanted to share their data with. So very, you know, people who already are doing the excellent thing, but just want to go a step further. But you would also have people who store their data on USB sticks, believe me. Um, of course, we have to adjust our advice depending on where the people are to make sure that they are not afraid. Look, we can help you. Give me your USB sticks. We'll help you to make it better. Use this support, you know, use this project drive. We'll help you to create this. You know, it will be so much easier for you. And we're grateful, you know, you do help them with little things and they start seeing the value. Yeah, and the people are in general just very happy that they don't have to look for the answers themselves and that there's someone there to hold their hand in a sense and to, to set them up because researchers really do not have the time to look up preservation policies or what is meant with this question exactly, what is fair because that is, that is also, it's not very well explained anywhere and if they have to look this up, that might take them 15 minutes, which they can spend uh, doing actual research or writing a paper. And that is where most of the reluctancy comes from. They're, they're just very stressed and they don't have the time to, uh, to organize it in this sense. And if they think that is a lot of time and work, um, yeah, they may be reluctant, but then if you explain that in the end, it will save them a lot of time and work, they are willing to listen. Uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, that sounds great. Uh, someone asks, uh, says, thank you, very interesting. Um, could you give us more information about how we could support the RDA values for money? That's interesting. So 
I guess it really depends on your institutional context, you know, to support value for money it depends on, as we des described beforehand, I guess we're quite lucky to delve because the openness principle and the importance of that wasn't a question. So that was relatively easy to get our senior management aboard to be able to invest some resources in this initiative. And that's, that's quite important for us and that helped us to achieve a lot. But of course, not every institution will have the same resources. And maybe um, I can introduce a project that I'm actually doing together with Ellie, that's part of Research Data Alliance, where we try to collect case studies from various institutions on what do they do to engage with their researchers. And what is important in there, like how much money does it cost, how much time, to, to start that initiative and how effective this initiative is in the long term. And for example, I mentioned the data stewards, we've been talking about this today, we talk about data champions, but there are numerous other institutions, I'm sure all of you as the attendees of this webinar, you have different tactics to, tactics to engage with your researchers. I have heard, for example, from colleagues at uh, Lancaster universities in the UK, where they organize data conversations where basically researchers come to talk to other researchers about what do they do with data. So that's very informal. Researchers talk to researchers. The only thing that the library does is to organize the meeting, advertise the meeting and provide pizza. But the meeting itself is run by researchers. So that's a very easy way to build community around those issues, which costs perhaps less money, you know, to just provide pizza once a month than to hire a person whether it's as effective, perhaps not, because you have to reach all the individuals. And I guess the data stewards can really knock on people's doors. And there was the question before, how do you convince the people who are perhaps reluctant? And as Esther, Esther said, those people who don't proactively come to the data steward, you need to approach them yourself. So that this data conversation wouldn't solve that problem. But of course, depending on what kind of resources are available, you might want to use different approaches. And uh, the project we are doing with Ellie, we hope that the deliverables will be available in the autumn next year. We want to write all those case studies into a textbook. So watch out for that. And hopefully we'll be able to give you some more inspiration and different kind of tactics you might use, which are maybe more appropriate to your budget and what kind of resources you have available. Thanks, Marta. I've just uh, pasted the link. I hope everyone can uh, see this. It's in the chat. So if you want to contribute, uh, it's open. It will stay open for uh, one month, I think. So you have time. Um, let's see other questions. I, uh, someone says, I understand that library has to be in the middle on the time to support their collaboration. Indeed, I think that's quite an important point because, as I mentioned before, the importance of a team building, that's actually a challenge as well, because you have to do a lot of talking, you have to have the time, you have to think about how do you support the people. And even though I would say I'm a dedicated person to, to support the data stewards, to build the communication with the research support team, that's never perfect. That can always be better. I can see lots of room for improvement. But that's a lot of time investment to make sure that we are all happy with our roles. So indeed, I think the role of a coordinator, the role of the library, you know, making sure that you, that all the people on the project share the same vision is quite important. And also, I did not speak about this today, but uh, one of my role and also my boss's role is also to make sure that other service providers across the university, so for example, the legal team, the human research ethics committee, the IT team, we all work together to provide good data management services. So I just spoke today about um, um, the data support part of that and the data stewards and the library because that was the topic of today. But of course, it's quite important that the team building also happens with people who are outside of that core research data support team. And as an example, perhaps I can mention, most of you would have heard about the GDPR, the new European regulation for general data protection. At the beginning of that, we were a bit unsure what to do, how to do with all that new requirements. 
but actually that was extremely helpful for us to align our workflows for data management plans with those workflows required for researchers to perform something called DPIA, Data Protection Impact Assessment, and also our ethics committee approval. So basically, while filling a data management plan, researchers are also pre-screening their projects, whether they need to have an ethics application or whether they need to get some specific advice on their data management from the legal team. So we really try to work together to provide coherent advice to researchers. I think many people, uh, many librarians in the call agree with you on that because um, uh, we, we see the importance that the library uh, place in these uh, in these initiatives but not everyone sees it and i'm trying to see if we have another question I, I, can i can i disagree with you here that uh, yes. the library is the most important uh in data management support i would i would not say most important i think we're all at the same level really uh, because without a connection to each faculty and to the researchers, you don't know what it is exactly that you're supposed to be doing at the library. And without having the library, I would not have the facilities or the backup or the expertise to help the researchers. So I would, I would not state it as the library is more important or data stewards are more important. I think it's really, uh, we, we all play a key role in this. Mm -hmm. And library, someone says library remains the central point of support of open access. Uh, so in the library, we support lots of different, uh, we provide lots of different kinds of research support. We provide support indeed, there's the central team supporting researchers with data management, but it's not like data stewards with day-to-day -day practices. They mostly manage, for example, the, the research data archive, so the place where researchers will be able to uh, persistently uh, store their data, create DOIs, and so on and so forth. And at the library, we also oversee various training provisions for data management. But these are the things that we need to do at the core that wouldn't be fair or that wouldn't be a sensible expectation of a data steward. These are the problems which are common for the whole university. So we address them from the central team. Uh, and then, of course, in that, that's the data team. But of course, we do have colleagues in the library who also provide support for open access to publications, who do the negotiations with publishers about the new deals. Or we also have colleagues who develop open education materials, for example, MOOCs, uh, some courses. And we all work together. So as within the library and also together with the data stewards, there is constant flow of communication. And indeed, sometimes a data steward will receive questions about publications. They are not the experts on open access to publication. The expertise is research data. So often they would then contact a relevant colleague in the library to provide advice on open access to publications. But yes, indeed, the library is overseeing all these different aspects of research support. And sometimes I'm able to answer questions myself if they're, if they're more general or I'm actually really interested in open access and open science. So most of the questions is of like, what should I do with my preprint? What should I do with my postprint? How does this work, etc.? I can also answer. Uh, but then if it comes more specific with copyright agreements, etc., then I will of course go to the library, uh, knock on the door and indeed ask for support because we don't know all the uh, answers to the questions, indeed, we are contact point uh, in that sense. Yes, I think that's what uh, the main, the conclusion is that, that this is a, a, a vital uh, aspect as uh, liaisons of uh, between this, uh, the different stakeholders in an institution. And I don't see other questions, but I have one or two myself. <laughs> so, um, Thinking of cost effectiveness uh, of this, uh, do you think that data stewardship could be part of a broader approach, like a national um, part of national policy, like more centrally organized? What do you mean? Do you mean uh, whether we should be providing, let's say, 
data stewardship support, like data steward who could help a different institution? Is that your question? Yes, and in different disciplines, but centrally. I think, to be honest with you, I would have mixed opinions. I think having this disciplinary network could be helpful and it could be helpful, let's say, and it would be interesting to see Esther's comment on that, I guess for them to have some more, you know, disciplinary experts that data stewards could have, could share their, you know, problems, possible solutions with. So let's say if Esther is the data steward at our Faculty of Applied Sciences at TU Delft, maybe she would like to connect with other data stewards doing the job with similar kind of disciplines at another university. But to be honest with you, I think what was our main value of providing data stewardship support, because at the same time you might say, why didn't we install data stewards at the library and then, you know, just coming to researchers on request. I think the core thing is that a data steward is based at the faculty. So they have their offices there, researchers know them, that's the recognized face, that's the trusted individual. These are the people who get to know the people who also would not request uh, support otherwise because either they don't think they have the problems or data management is something that they are reluctant to. So I think the key benefit for us at least to have these data stewards is actually that they are based at the faculty, not even at the central university. So I would have difficulty imagining that kind of support being based at the national or international level, to be honest. Yeah, so I think it's quite complicated to do it at a national level and to do it interchangeable like that because even within one institution there's already a lot of uh, difference of opinion on what it is that we should be doing or how we should be doing it etc because even here at the faculties and uh, having the eight data stewards we're not all doing exactly the same thing and that is it might be because our disciplines are slightly different uh, but I think it's mostly just because one building contains a lot of people and they just have a different uh, way of viewing things. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm not in contact, for example, with people within the Netherlands that provide support for um, similar backgrounds. Uh, actually, I will provide a workshop for one uh, of these uh, institutions uh, at the end of the month uh, in order to also, uh, yeah, exchange practices and, and be able to uh, help each other out etc so in the future uh, they might be able to help myself with some of the discipline specific issues that i have at my institute etc um, but i think it really depends on the vision of the institute what what the idea is behind the data stewards um, but yeah okay. any discipline specific information we can of course exchange and help each other out and that is also what is happening here in the netherlands at least and probably also uh, more internationally speaking, with RDA, etc. So. Yes, I see. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm conscious that it's 12 o'clock, well, in Greece it's 12 o'clock, uh, and we're just on, in, on time. Uh, I just read a very uh, good point in the chat. Uh, the conclusion has to be collaboration, and I totally agree, and I'm sure that everyone agrees, and. This is the whole point and one of the major um, issues uh, of open science is all about collaboration and how we all can uh, collaborate and exchange knowledge and yes and work with each other to improve things and to move things forward and i would like to thank you very much for uh, esther and marta and esther for your time and um, your thorough explanation uh, of things uh, you tackled i think most of the most of the issues the major issues that uh, are vital uh, for the data stewardship uh, subject and yes thank you very much and see you soon thank you thank bye bye, you. bye.